So I grew up playing the Xbox and the Xbox 360. They were some of my best gaming memories and I met some really cool friends on Xbox Live playing Halo 2 and all that. So I was pretty excited to see what the new Xbox was going to be like, but I was really, really disappointed with the Xbox One reveal. It was just... Here are my top 5 worst things about the Xbox One. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing... Xbox One. Okay, who the hell thought the Xbox One was a good name? Like, never mind the confusion it causes with the original Xbox, which we'll now have to call the original Xbox instead of the Xbox One. But how the hell did you go from 360 to One? Xbox 720, Xbox Infinity, any of these would have been a better name. Hell, might as well call it the TV box or something, considering my next point. Watch TV. Yes, that fast. Did you see how instant that was? Oh man, I feel like watching some TV. You better go buy an Xbox. No! Like, why the hell would you buy an Xbox to watch TV? Oh wait, what's that? You don't live in the US? Well, f*** you then. Enjoy precisely zero of the TV related features we're gonna have. Speaking of features, how many of you guys actually want a voice activated remote control? It'll cost you a couple hundred dollars. Also, what if you have an accent, mate? Can I still use the friggin' Kinect, yeah? And can you essentially troll the hell out of anyone playing the system by constantly shouting stupid shit like Xbox Open Internet Explorer or Xbox Skype, Xbox TV, Xbox Off? Hell, I'm gonna try the first chance I get. On the Halo TV series, yeah, that's cool, I like Halo. But Steven Spielberg is only producing this, and the things he's been producing are, well... Yeah. Come on, are you telling me that the Wii U is the only next-gen console that is actually backwards compatible? It's pretty much been confirmed that neither games nor accessories will be backwards compatible with the Xbox One. So for people who have an extensive library of 360 games, well I guess you better make sure your console still works if you want to keep playing all those games. And finally, Game developers can take advantage of our worldwide multi-data center infrastructure to drive direct game computation. So Xbox Live Gold is still going to be a paid subscription model and without it you can't play online multiplayer. Uh, I guess I'll let that one slide because it's been like that for many years now, but I'm not quite sure I agree with the always on mechanics. Yes, the system won't always require an internet connection, but apparently it will need to connect to the internet once every 24 hours. I'm not exactly sure what happens if it doesn't, but it's probably nothing good. Maybe your games will stop working or, you know, since games are like bound to your accounts now. Oh, and how do you guys feel about the Kinect watching it 24-7, huh? So it's gonna be on in low power mode even if you turn the console off, so you can so shout Xbox on and turn your console back on. This seems like a beginning of Skynet, right here. By far the worst thing about the Xbox One is its ability to block games, uh, pre-owned games by implementing a fee. The official word on this has been really shaky and no one really knows for sure how it's gonna work, but it seems like games will be bound to accounts like Steam. Apparently you will need the game disc to authenticate your account to play that game, so if you lend that disc to someone else, you can't play it. Something like that, I don't know. Other sources are saying you don't need to pay a fee and everything's gonna be just as good as before, but I really don't know what the deal is with this. There's been a lot of conflicting answers both by Microsoft and other reps themselves, so we're just gonna have to wait and see how it actually plays out. On a side note, I was also pretty disappointed with the lineup of games that was shown at the reveal. I mean, Call of Duty, Forza, yeah, that's all cool, but I want to see some new stuff, you know? I really hope Microsoft is going to show some games at E3, but from what I've seen so far, it doesn't really look promising, and I'm probably going to be getting a PS4 instead, or just sticking to my trusty old PC. So hopefully you're going to see some games, because that's really what it's all about. The Xbox 360 was successful because it had really good games, like a Perfect Dark Zero, that was pretty good. So, you know, bring the games, 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 the game, games, man, the game, guys, want the games. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.